Okay, before we start this video, I have a huge announcement to make. If you're watching this on June 3rd, then it's officially my 23rd birthday! Sorry to disappoint everyone that thought I was a child. Because I am actually an adult with a bachelor's degree. And because it's my birthday, I decided to take a plunge and finally set up that Patreon I've been wanting to do for months now. I currently have only one tier set up for the low low price of 5 US dollars or 7 Australian dollars a month, but if you want to spring for annual membership, you can get 15% off! What a steal! As a patron, you get an exclusive Discord role in my Discord server, which gives you access to patron-exclusive voice and text channels. You also get to see work in progress and behind-the-scenes content, and even get the scoop on what my future projects are. Plus, you then get to watch those videos earlier than everybody else, ad-free, and you get to vote for my next video topic, design, or even rewrite ideas. I'm planning on adding more tiers with even more perks like shoutouts down the line, but I'll have to see how this goes first and just what people want to see, I guess? So if this is something that interests you or someone you know, or if you want to give me a nice birthday present, please consider becoming a pond dweller today. And now, back to your irregularly scheduled content. This is Calimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. Now, if you are already familiar with my content, you might know that my entire channel recently has just been Miraculous Ladybug, and honestly, I'm not mad about it. Maybe I've just gotten to a point where I can ignore a lot of the bad decisions and cringy writing and gaslight myself into being hyped for the action sequences. I admit, the latter bit is still difficult because it's so boring, but it's not even boring enough to play in the background while I work. Because every few seconds someone says or does something utterly ridiculous that I have to look up and pause the show so I can collect myself. I always get these comments on my videos, so if you want to say, Oh, Miraculous isn't that bad, it's actually pretty good sometimes, or it's way better now with the new season, just don't, because it's not, and please watch literally any other animated show. I wouldn't argue the show got good, it just started doing what it was supposed to be doing from season 1, maybe season 2 at most and I don't think that really warrants any praise. I know you're hyper fixated on MLB, but the only reason it's comforting to you is because it's familiar and it makes you anxious to step out into the unknown and watch new things. Trust me, I've been there and I know you can get through this. Am I projecting a little? Probably, but you need to know that because of this experience, I now enjoy the live-action Last Airbender movie. Do you want to be someone who enjoys M. Night Shyamalan's Avatar adaptation? No, it's a dark, terrible place to be. So really, these videos have become something of a silver lining to me. Because if I'm frustrated with the real show, I can't really do anything about it. But here, I can make anything I want happen and I'm genuinely having way more fun with the villains than I have any right to be. Probably because, like the villains, I too want to see the world of Miraculous and everyone in it to burn. No, but seriously, I highly recommend making villain OCs for any series you're currently into. We all want to be heroes, and there's definitely a saturation of hero OCs, but let's face it, Villains are what makes the story worth telling. There's just so many fun things you can do with a villain that you can't do with a hero. So I'm very excited for today's redesign of Felix Graham de Vanilly, if I said that right. But without further ado, let's dive right in! So 
So let me give you some context about Felix, because trust me, there is a lot to talk about. Miraculous Ladybug originally debuted as a 3 minute long 2D animated reel created by Toei Animation. This reel was meant to be a promotional trailer for the series and the only reason we know of its existence was because it was leaked on the now deleted YouTube channel Zagtoons. Allegedly, it did not perform well in test screenings due to the Japanese art style and technical difficulties animating the spots on Ladybug's suit, which allegedly gave people motion sickness. That's just one of the reasons why I too hate polka dots. So they scrapped the 2D animation idea in favor of 3D where they would have fewer technical difficulties and changed the art style completely to appeal more to a western audience. But to get to the MLB we know today, they also changed the two main lead characters and their backstories. See, PV Ladybug was originally named Bridget, and PV Cat Noir was Felix. That meant Felix is technically the original Cat Noir before he was replaced by Adrian Agreste in the current version of Miraculous. The reason for this was because Thomas Astruck deemed Felix to be an anime cliché and that the team thought Bridget and Felix's relationship was unconvincing as a hero duo. Now, PV Felix had a completely different personality from Adrian and the Felix we have now. He's cold, stoic, seemingly a loner and uninterested in making friends. He seems genuinely exasperated by Plague, and I've also seen people talk about how Cat Noir only tries to romance Ladybug because that's the only way he can get the Cat Miraculous off his finger. I personally can't say for sure because I don't know where people got this information from, not that it's false, just that I couldn't find their source, and the PV re-upload currently available on YouTube doesn't really give much away in terms of story or characters. But what I can say is that from a strictly visual standpoint, I prefer the original anime-inspired animation for MLB, just because the characters seem much more dynamic and expressive without ever crossing into… whatever this is. I thought the characters had a stronger visual style, the world felt more alive and immersive, and the characters looked pretty fashionable for once. One of the gripes I have with CGI MLB is that I found the characters' movements to be jerky and neck-breakingly quick, which is fine for action scenes but not when it's happening every single scene despite regardless of the mood. I think it's the same issue that Mulan 2 had in comparison with Mulan 1, where they knew how to balance the comedic, exaggerated movements with somber, subtle ones to maximize the effects. Meanwhile, MLB's 2D PV was much smoother and was actually able to convey characters' emotions pretty well without even a single line of dialogue. But then again, I'm totally biased because I grew up watching Indonesian dubbed anime reruns on Spacetoon because western cartoons were only available on subscription-based direct-to-home satellite television and it was pretty expensive. Also, shout out to my Indonesian fans who also spent their days before and after school watching Spacetoon. If you exist. Still, there's no use crying over spilled milk and we got the show that we got. So let's talk about current Canon Felix. His full name is Felix Graham de Vanelli and his mother is the identical twin sister of Emily Agreste, making him Adrian's cousin and Gabriel's nephew. This is the show's way of trying to reincorporate an old OC and making him Adrian's evil twin without making him an evil twin, even though the cousin or identical twin sisters having identical kids is completely impossible from a genetic standpoint. Or at the very least, it's a very 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 small probability. Even if Amelie, Felix's mother, had married Gabriel's identical twin, their kids would still not be identical because of this little thing called genetic recombination. And the only way you would get an identical offspring is for one fertilized egg to split into two cells and develop into two separate babies. But let's not dive too deeply into that, shall we? Of course, it's also entirely possible for two complete strangers who aren't related in any way to look exactly like each other, so maybe it's not really that big a deal. 
So Felix originally appeared in season 3 when he and his mother came to visit Adrian and Gabriel to, I, I guess, commemorate the one year anniversary of Emily's disappearance. In the episode, he intends to retrieve the twin rings of the Graham de Vanelli family, which were used as Gabriel and Emily's wedding rings. But Gabriel wants to keep them. Felix manages to trick Adrian into giving him his clothes so he can impersonate him and make him look bad in front of his friends, probably because he was still mad that Adrian skipped Felix's dad's funeral and then never reached out to him after. Kind of like a Max and Chloe situation. Or maybe the show is just very bad at introducing villains other than villain character must do villain things straight away. Otherwise, how will the audience know he's a villain? Anyway, chaos ensues and by the end of the episode, Felix manages to make off with Gabriel's wedding ring, retrieving one half of the Graham de Vanelli twin rings. And then we never see him again. But no, since his debut episode, there is an alarming lack of acknowledgement or inclusion of Felix in the story until the episode Gabriel aggressed despite the massive impact he left on his debut. But I will say that each time Felix makes an appearance, something big happens. Which makes sense that he was brought back for the season 4 finale where he was arguably the catalyst for the events that ensue. Yes, after appearing in only 4 episodes out of the 104 that MLB has in total, Felix single-handedly managed to completely turn the tides and gain possession of every single miraculous in the Chinese miracle box except for the cat and ladybug miraculous. Also, it's never really sat well with me that the French superhero team uses the miraculous from the Chinese miracle box. It's giving very colonist vibes. But anyways, he gave them all to Hawk Moth in exchange for the Peacock Miraculous, however, we're not quite sure why, but we do know that he's probably got his own plans we're not privy to, and I like that. My theory is that he wants to use the Peacock Miraculous to create a senti monster of his dad to quote unquote bring him back to life. But in comparison to other MLB characters, Felix is probably the better written one in that he effectively elicits the response he was meant to. In other words, he's actually fulfilling his role as the enigmatic villain slash double agent. As was the case with Lila with the Fox Miraculous, I thought Felix made a better fit for the Cat Miraculous than Adrian did. He's mysterious and cunning, charismatic and clever, he's driven, he knows what he wants and how to get it. He's selfish, rude, stubborn and pushy, and he will do whatever it takes to achieve his goals. He's probably the only character that managed to figure out that Gabriel was Hawk Moth all on his own and learn about Emily's condition. Mans is accomplishing way more than the heroes or Gabriel ever did throughout the duration of the entire series. And it just goes to show that as soon as a competent villain is incorporated into the show, the hero's team completely falls apart. It shows how weak their operations are and it makes Hawk Moth seem even more pathetic for not being able to breach it even once for the past four seasons. I guess Thomas was right in swapping him for Adrian after all. If Felix was the main character instead of Adrian, we'd only get maybe 5 episodes. Or if this Felix appeared in more episodes, the show probably wouldn't have hit that 26 episode quota or risk reducing Felix's impact on the audience by making him a second hawk moth. I am going to go on a tangent here and say that it was a bad decision for MLB to consistently push out 26 episodes every season. They can only stretch the main storyline so far without it becoming contrived, at least more than it already is, so they need to pad out the rest of the season with much less interesting and weaker story points like the love square that's going on between Kagami, Adrian, Luca, and Marinette, or a super crazy what if episode that gets retconned by time travel. It makes the entire series feel wishy-washy and aimless. I get that it's not meant to be a Marvel movie, though Thomas sure thinks it's on the same level as one. It just fails to really build up a sense of continuity or development. 
I feel like if they trimmed the episodes down to maybe 12 or 13 a season, they'd have a much tighter narrative that's easier to follow and get invested in. And I know I've said this a hundred times with kids media, but just because it's for kids doesn't mean it should be bad or that badness is expected and then act like it's revolutionary when it's good sometimes. Because surprise surprise, there are kids shows out there that are good all the time. So I really don't think these powerful, wealthy corporations deserve praise just for doing the bare minimum. Because as we know, a majority of the original vision of the artists and writers on shows and movies will often get heavily altered by the people in charge to suit their investors and public image. Even if it meant putting out an inferior product. I just think we should reevaluate what does and doesn't constitute kids' media. Because it's such a broad age range where individuals experience rapid physical and mental development. And that's reflected through what is considered kids' media. On one hand, we have shows like Spongebob Squarepants, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and Phineas and Ferb. But on the other hand, shows like The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Invader Zim, and Samurai Jack are also considered kids' shows. And if you watched any of those shows, you know exactly how dark and scary they can get. So clearly, the genre of kid shows is extremely broad and diverse, and it's unfair to put all of kids' media into the same box. Just like how a 5-year-old communicates and processes information is significantly different from a 10-year-old despite both being considered children. I'm just saying, don't limit what a show should or shouldn't be just on the basis that it's for kids. Or at the very least, just be transparent and state which age range you're really trying to go for, instead of being vague because you're secretly hoping older audiences would also pick it up and buy merch from you, and then being too prideful to admit that, hey, this show is for 7 year olds, okay? Don't take it so seriously. Alright, rant over. Let's get back to Felix. So for my redesign of Felix, I had a good idea of what I wanted to do for his civilian design. Unlike Adrian, Felix has a very clear style and it's actually a style I like a lot. How he looks in the show is very accurate to how he looked in the PV by Toei. The issue is, the design was translated very poorly into 3D. Once again, the show has an issue with volumes. In Felix's case, his hair looks like it's just coated with gel and flopped onto his head, and his clothes look like Hawk Moth's absolutely skin-tight suit. And yeah, it's probably easier to animate that way, because you're not expending extra effort on the movement of clothes, but they could have compensated that with more flattering cuts of clothing, which is what I will be attempting to do. The fashion style I decided to follow for Felix is a similar one to Gabriel's, except more appropriate for his age. I looked up suits for young boys on Pinterest and found this adorable waistcoat suit that is already quite similar to his current suit. The only difference is that the vest had a much lower cut than Felix's. It also had a nice pattern that gave it a bit more flair. But then, I saw this picture, and it got me really inspired to take a different direction for Felix. See, Felix behaves a lot like Gabriel. He's got a straight-backed posture, always keeps his chin up, and peers down at everyone around him. He looks very rigid and inflexible, and yet he manages to impersonate Adrian perfectly, and is very expressive when he wants to be. So, for my interpretation of Felix, I wanted to lean more into that sly, cunning personality. That flexible, suave, opportunist. Very much like Nick Wilde. Not in appearance, but in body language and personality. Unlike Adrian, Felix knows his way in the world. He's interacted with lots of people from all walks of life and he knows what people want to hear, and that's exactly what he says to get his way. He's not a liar or a manipulator like Lila, more that he's very well-spoken and charming, and that allows him to convince people to do what he wants as opposed to tricking them into it. Thus, the primary changes made were to the hair and face, as you would have seen. 
I wanted Felix's hair to have more volume and I want to reflect his personality through his face and body language to differentiate him from Adrian. Felix has a sharper gaze and a more relaxed posture. His smile has more of an edge to it, indicating that he's up to something. And I can just imagine him to be the type of character to know coin tricks. Maybe he keeps a coin in his pocket just for that. Adrian did mention that Felix did magic tricks, so I think that checks out. Even though I know it's genetically impossible for Felix and Adrian to look like identical twins, it's still possible for them to look similar enough for people to mistake them for each other. Plus, people mistaking their identities for each other have been pivotal in the story so far and I want to keep that for my rewrite. But where I encountered issues was when I got to his superpowered form. I wasn't sure if I wanted him to be a miraculous holder or an akumatized villain like Lila, because I did like his design as formidable, so I thought, maybe I should redesign that. But on the other hand, it makes no sense for him to have a miraculous if he was never on Ladybug's side. Plus, none of the other characters aside from Chloe or Kagami even knows he exists. Heck, Marinette in canon still thinks he's Adrian, and that was the entire reason why she gave him the dog miraculous in the first place. I'm actually quite curious to see how they'll resolve it in season 5, since Marinette doesn't know that it wasn't Adrian that backstabbed her, but she can't confront him either or he'll know that she's Ladybug. So I'm really curious to see how that's going to change her relationship with him and her perception of him in general. I just really hope they don't spin it into melodrama with endless misunderstandings because uh, that'll just do me in, I think. But back to my version of Felix, it would be entirely possible for him to steal the dog Miraculous the first time Marinette gives it to him, and that has incredible implications that gave me a brilliant idea. So for his super form, I decided to redesign Flaremidable after all. At the moment, he's looking a lot like a Shiba Inu in the original design, so to make him look more intimidating, I decided to go with a German Shepherd, which would also create a stronger parallel to Cat Noir's appearance. That was also one of the reasons why I decided to keep Felix as a miraculous holder, because we know how the saying goes with cats and dogs. Funnily enough, given their respective personalities, Adrian would have been the better fit for the dog Miraculous, but c'est la vie. However, one of the things German Shepherd dogs are known for are their roles as military dogs, so I definitely took heavy inspiration from military core outfits for Felix's design. Face masks were a pretty common accessory and it immediately made me think, what's another thing aggressive dogs often have to wear? That's right, muzzles. Maybe this isn't normally a feature for the dog Miraculous, but because Felix is using it for evil, it becomes one of the components of his costume. I thought a snout like muzzle would not only show off his dog theme better, but also make him look more intimidating and be a fun alternative for the eye mask that all the other heroes wear. I imagine the muzzle also enhances his sense of smell, which allows him to track down anyone he wants. For the design itself, I was heavily inspired by Oni masks that feature menacing teeth, but a bit more contemporary, like the one worn by Akali in Pop Stars. Like Adrian, I also made his hair a darker color to match his costume better and further conceal his identity. And now, let's get to the story. So in my previous video, I mentioned how Felix would be one of Hawk Moth's henchmen, right? Well, how do we get there, and how does Felix end up stealing the dog Miraculous? Let's talk about that, shall we? First things first, I'm going to keep the dog Miraculous's power more or less the same, but can we just acknowledge how redundant it is with the Horse Miraculous? Since technically both deal with teleportation, one just uses portals and the other uses a ball. It's kind of like the issue with the Snake and Bunny Miraculous, where both deal with time travel but one is significantly more OP than the other. However, for the sake of my rewrite, I'm going to merge the Horse Miraculous' power with the Dog Miraculous, and if I ever want to do a redesign of Max Conte, I'll probably give the Horse Miraculous a completely different power. 
So Flermidable's abilities are the same as in the show, with the only difference being that he can also use his fetch ability to teleport people that it touches as well, effectively allowing him to send away anyone he doesn't want in the battlefield. Like throwing Ladybug for a loop by sending her to Italy, or summoning allies into battle quickly. However, he can also use his ability to teleport himself anywhere he wants to go, including where his enemy is, by tossing and catching his own dog ball. His ability to find his enemies ties into his enhanced smelling ability, which enables him to detect where someone is within a city-wide radius of him with pinpoint accuracy, just from one whiff of their belongings. This makes him extremely difficult to catch or shake off, and extremely dangerous in a face-to-face -face confrontation. Plus, even without a miraculous or akumatization, Felix has moves. He is easily one of the most competent miraculous holders out there, perhaps even rivaling Ladybug herself. But how does he fit into my story? We're going to start with Felix's debut in season 3. The first change I would make is to move that episode from one of the last episodes in the season to the very first episode to give Felix a chance to show up in more episodes in that season and build up his presence. Things should go exactly as they did originally with Felix disguising himself as Adrian and trying to ruin his reputation with his friends and by the end of it successfully stealing Gabriel's wedding ring. However, instead of feeling bitter towards Felix and treating him as an enemy, Gabriel sees potential and decides to recruit him. I would write in a new episode where Gabriel tries to convince Felix to his side and we can probably replace one of the filler episodes with this. Probably the episode Animaestro, which is chronologically the second episode in season 3, which would allow it to continue directly from Felix's debut and would also eliminate Thomas Astruck's canon existence in the show. So it's, it's a win-win. In this new hypothetical episode, Gabriel sends an Akuma after Felix on his journey back to London and communicates with him through it. As Hawkmoth, he invites Felix to join his side in exchange for anything his heart desires. Felix is painfully aware of who Hawkmoth is, getting caught in the thick of it just earlier that day, so naturally he's wary and tells Hawkmoth that he'll need time to consider it, though he's definitely intrigued. I can see them both holding their cards closely to their chest, so to speak, but Hawkmoth would insist on meeting him in person. Of course, as risky as it was, Felix also had a goal he wanted to achieve, and if Hawkmoth can assist with that goal, then this was an opportunity he couldn't pass up on. So they meet in London, Hawkmoth making the effort to travel outside of his territory as a show of goodwill to Felix, and they discuss their terms. Hawkmoth offers to grant him power in exchange for servitude to him, and Felix asks him to elaborate. Hawkmoth explains that he can grant people any super ability they desire, allowing them to fulfill their heart's desires, simply in exchange for their loyalty and assistance in getting what he wants. A fair, mutual transaction. So Felix asks him, What do you want? And Hawkmoth answers, Something precious that was taken from me. And to get it back, I need the cat and ladybug miraculous. Of course, Felix huffs, then responds, If you can't get back what was lost to you, then what good are you to me? From there, Hawkmoth is able to infer just what it was Felix wanted, and it was a similar wish to his. And for Hawkmoth, who already knew of his family history, that only made things easier. So Hawkmoth smiles and says, Then help me attain those miraculouses. Once I get my wish, you will get yours. We both get what we want. And that is how Gabriel manages to recruit Felix onto his team. By essentially implying that once he's done with the ladybug and cat miraculouses, Felix can have them. 
So not only does Felix have a personal incentive to get the ladybug and cat miraculous, there's also a very real possibility that Felix can simply steal them for himself and betray Hawk Moth. So he's a bit of a wild card. Of course, Felix starts off as an akumatized villain like Lila, engaging in combat with Ladybug and Cat Noir directly to get a better sense of their fighting styles and powers, and making a tactical retreat when things start to look hairy so that his identity doesn't get exposed. Now, Felix has the advantage of having an inside scoop on Ladybug, and that is the fact that he knows Ladybug has a crush on Adrian and vice versa. So he would make use of that and disguise himself as Adrian once again, and with Volpina's help, they orchestrate a crime to lure out Ladybug and Cat Noir. Felix purposefully throws himself into the chaos and gets Ladybug to save him. He then tells her that he's sick of feeling helpless and that he wants to help somehow, and he gets it in her head to give him a miraculous, which she does thinking Bark's power of teleportation would allow him to help from a safe distance. And so, he obtains the Dog Miraculous. Of course, this is before Ladybug becomes the new guardian of the Miraculous, so she doesn't have access to all the Miraculouses through her yo-yo yet. And for a while, Felix acts as a double agent, helping the heroes while feeding intel to Hawk Moth. And while pretending to be a hero, Felix would assume his original appearance as Flermidable. Of course, Ladybug thinks that Flermidable is Adrian, and Adrian as Cat Noir can't say anything without compromising his own identity. So Felix effectively has him in a bind. Of course, as Adrian, he can confront Felix for pretending to be him so that he could hang out with Ladybug, but I can also see Felix convincing Adrian that he thinks she's cool and that he wants to be a superhero because it makes him feel good about himself. And being as naive as Adrian is, I can see him believing Felix and letting the charade go on, because he wants his cousin to be happy and to make up for his past failures. Of course, he ends up paying dearly for that. At the end of season 3, when Ladybug becomes the new guardian, that's probably when he and Hawk Moth start planning on handicapping the hero team. In other words, stealing the other Miraculouses and reducing the hero's numbers now that the Miracle Box is in such close proximity to them. To recap what happened in the last video for Season 4, I said that Cat Noir would voluntarily join Hawk Moth after finding out his true identity and why he wants the Cat and Ladybug Miraculous in the first place. Ladybug has also been accused of fatally injuring Cat Noir after a brutal fight between the two of them broke out, which was actually caused by Lila who had shapeshifted into Ladybug. The French superhero team is shaken by the events and everyone is on edge. And the only person who seems to still be in full support of Ladybug is Flermidable, who she still thinks is Adrian. Only for him to put a knife in her back when she least expected it. Like in the season 4 finale, Flermidable steals her yo-yo, which allows Hawk Moth to grab all the other Miraculouses from the Chinese Miracle Box. Flermidable effectively cuts down the hero's numbers, and Ladybug now thinks that Adrian had betrayed her. This strains Marinette's relationship with Adrian even further, particularly when he's just Adrian aggressed, and she's Ladybug. Of course, Adrian still cares about her, so he would question the necessity of stealing the other Miraculouses and putting Ladybug under even more stress, but Flermidable simply asks him if he really wanted to fight all his friends, having to look them in the face, see the betrayal in their eyes, and burn those bridges. Adrian falls silent. And with that, we are effectively caught up to where the show currently is now. It's Ladybug against the world, without the support of the other heroes and feeling horribly betrayed by those closest to her. But that is where we're going to leave it for this video. If you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I put a lot of work into these videos, so it really means a lot to me that I'm able to keep things interesting enough for you to keep coming back each time I upload. I'm currently working on my own version of Miraculous, which is an alternate universe with different characters and story, but with the same premise of superpowers and animal-themed superheroes. 
and Kwamis, but they're called something else in my version. So if you've enjoyed my writing and redesign so far, you're probably gonna enjoy that AU. Thank you so much to everyone who sent me fan art. I always love seeing people's drawings of my redesigns and if you want your art to be featured at the end of my videos, go ahead and send them to me on my Twitter or Instagram. Also, if you're able to, please join my Patreon, check out my comic, it's on Webtoon because that will make me really happy and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye! Come clouds again